the uh, critical care management always we we were think about uh, we are not knowing anything so we just it is not our cup of tea ventilator it is not my cup of tea always we just go and escape from that so if you know about the ventilator in especially in in terms of reading the ventilator so it is a easy way to explore uh, the patient's complete his complete uh, situation or the complete uh, what what you can say the the exact state of the patient so you can able to uh, find okay so before starting my uh, screening my uh, i mean sharing my screen uh, so i just want to ask you one question okay uh, i would need a genuine answer from you all i, I don't bother about that whether it is yes or no okay how many of you from your heart you can say you know about what is ventilator graphics say just put a chat box yes or no i my kind request it is not just i want to know how many of you already you come with the preparation uh, to learn about this particular one okay how many of you know about the ventilator graphics just say yes or no no issues i'm really happy there the people who put a no i'm really happy to them if they yes yes again double happy because they will be uh, uh, they will be helping me to interact Uh, in better way if anyone says yes they will be interacting me in the throughout session of this particular one don't worry i will finish the not more than 40 minutes okay so i know <laughs> i know the difficulty of the mentality by 9 o'clock and as well as the network also okay yeah i think a uh, few people uh, know about that many people uh, say no <laughs> some people know and some people really no don't know <laughs> okay thank you uh, thanks for giving this uh, feedback uh, really it's very interactive and uh, i just want to uh, share my screen with the uh, with the consent of the doctor dr himanshu shall i share my screen yes sir uh, try sharing the screen you are the host now Sir, is it visible? Yes, sir. Visible. Okay, okay. Okay. Once again, I just, uh, I just want to share today about that uh, ventilator graphics. So, whatever uh, I have in my uh, view of the ventilator graphics, I just want to share to you all and happily. And uh, the same thing, I just want to. Everyone want to be a modern pro. not by old pro okay i know everyone uh, here to update yourself i hope i will fulfill this yeah uh, do you know the ventilation about can you guess what does it mean all these uh, uh, symbols can you text it uh, what what does it mean that's a 300 million 300 million is a number is there what does it mean related to your ventilation if you know anything you just put in the chat box what does it mean 300 million yeah if you are if you are entering yeah okay so what about 150 the 150 cup means the 150 ml what is 150 ml okay i think few people have uh, entered i hope maybe people using ventilator cycles values of parameters yeah it's a volume 
300 million lung volumes and capacity no okay okay i just reveal yeah they have tried many people tried good it's a very good response from you all and use of parameters okay okay i just break the yeah i just break the ice so 300 million is nothing but we have a, a beautiful uh, uh, the, the grapes of our our body uh, there are a lot of alveoli uh, so we have approximately 300 million of alveoli so when you just spread the alveoli, if you cut and spread the alveoli, it will be extending as like a tennis court. I think it's a huge, uh, it's a huge area, but we are not, we are less, pro, I mean, uh, let's refer to this area, but it's a very huge tennis court. Uh, it's almost equal to that particular size of the tennis court. Okay. And uh, you can find another one that is a, the 150 ml. So which is an anatomical dead space where there will be a no, uh, uh, chances of uh, uh, interaction with the, I mean, there will be no participation with the uh, oxygenation. Okay, and whereas in the remaining portion, uh, just within a five centimeter distance from the uh, terminal bronchioles to alveoli, suddenly that uh, trend has changed almost 3000 ml. The, the grapes picture I have given, so to indicate for that 3000 ml of the, the gas, which is uh, almost. Uh, uh, when you, when you uh, it will be it will be in the volume of the air which is inside the respiratory zone uh, in the entire 300 millions of the alveoli okay and uh, you just imagine if you tiny vessels if you are uh, trying to uh, stretch the tiny tiny vessels of the pulmonary capillaries okay it will stretch up to 1500 miles so how beautiful are lungs i just want to highlight this particular point so how to be with a very effective and efficient way uh, to treat our lungs okay so it's a right and need of the hour nowadays so even the covid situation and many of the intensivists with whom i contact they used to tell about upload about the role of physiotherapy in covid management especially in critical care in ic okay so uh, definitely uh, even in last week uh, we had seen about few of the magazine report from the pgi chandigarh and they have uploaded about the role of physiotherapy uh, in that in the department in pgi chandigarh and uh, fighting against the COVID-19 patients in ICU. Okay, just let me... Yeah, I just want to uh, focus the few important points of this uh, today's session. Uh, one is about, uh, we have to talk about the ventilator graphics and uh, next one we can go with the a specific point of the basics of the ventilator because I just want to uh, make it uh, clear about it because many of uh, students are here so and some research scholar also here so and I just want to start with the, uh, the specific uh, area with the research evidence only and just not only uh, just giving you an idea so with the research study only I just start with that so for the research scholar it may be helpful uh, to import with this one and uh, how to analyze the waveform as the, in a, in a a specific restricted time I can able to focus on that area also okay so usually when entered graphics those are which are we usually we have to we have to uh, uh, find out a few of the uh, data from the numerical part of the ventilator for the lung ventilations okay so these are the few points always to the display in the graphics of the numerical data and during the ventilation so usually with the, in, the, in the real time, uh, bedside pulmonary graphics have become a standard care in the most of the ICUs. So the most of the information which is presented by these graphics, the real time always with the continuous display and it is not only in the snapshot of the previous pulmonary function. So it is, a, it is always an important uh, thing to remember. So the a kind of a motion picture of each and every individual breath can be analyzed by this uh, ventilator graphics. So also it is it's presented with a, a common plot control method uh, of the different variables which is which can be in the vertical axis and as well as the axis of the uh, part of the, uh, the ventilator graphics. So that will be uh, in showing in the various variables in the vertical axis uh, and as well as with the horizontal axis also which can be measured and uh, can be easily assessed uh, in this particular area. 
so which can be uh, called in a different uh, names of the scalar graph and uh, uh, plots okay these are the two uh, loop graphs so these are all the graph plots so usually we used to see in the loop graph and as well as the scalar graph okay these are the two major uh, thing we should we should always to remember okay so that i will explain in detail in the next session slides okay from this the research evidence i just want to uh, start with the introduction so in this study what happened they have done with the uh, um, yeah, kind of uh, uh, i mean awareness among the patients that are would deal in the icu and i just they want to uh, know about the uh, the graphics which are uh, used in the icu so so they have uh, air marked more than 500 hospitals in india and uh, they have uh, sent a mail to all over the hospital and then finally they have found only 250 hospitals uh, they allow physiotherapists to practice uh, and alter the ventilator uh, settings okay so uh, rest of the things there they don't have a specific uh, uh, so there will be less, uh, I mean, setups over there, and uh, only 250 uh, hospitals are approached. So, in the 250 hospitals, what happened? They have responded only 105 uh, physios has responded, and uh, that physios, uh, out of that 105, you believe it or not, only 15 people uh, have given a response. The response, in the sense, whether they, they are using this uh, ventilator graphics in the proper way in their intervention okay so there was a very sad thing the entire 250 hospitals only 50 therapists are using this ventilator graphics so that was the first uh, idea of uh, sharing this kind of ventilator graphics uh, with a different manner so and just want to talk about with the uh, why we should do this ventilator graphics first they have done uh, the, to find out the static and dynamic compliance of the lungs and uh, they want to check with the inspiratory and expiratory resistance Okay, either by intrinsic and positive and uh, positive, intrinsic positive and expiratory pressure. So that will be another one important thing to remember. And ventilator waveforms that are which are used routinely can be analyzed. So that was the main objective of that particular questionnaire. So they have given a questionnaire about 23 questions they have shared in the mail. Uh, so uh, they have given a lot of uh, uh, information about this particular uh, the questionnaires and they have shared in the email and uh, they have got this particular 15 responses okay sir am i audible yes sir you are audible sir yeah okay okay thank you thank you sir so what happened with this situation so they have sent all the um, uh, questionnaires to the entire uh, hospital and finally what they have found so uh, they have found that there is a, a uh, there are uh, there are many uh, kind of the graphical representations in the ICU very used and to monitor the function of the ventilator to set the appropriate handle volume to set the peep uh, and as well as to uh, uh, find out the flow rate and uh, to identify the problems and uh, correcting the especially in the sensitivity uh, for the correction of the sensitivity uh, so and also to check for the auto peep. Okay, and also for the removal of secretions. These are all the, the major motives which they have found in this ventilator uh, graphics in the ICU by the physiotherapist. Even they have found a lot of uh, changes with the response of the, the graphics and they have able to monitor the response of the bronchodilators also and they can adjust the uh, settings and they can able to calculate the the compliance and resistance and work of breathing, all those things can be analyzed by the ventilator graphics in the ICU. So the questions are focused on these particular areas. So whether uh, how do you check the peep, peep and how do you alter the peep like that they have given the questionnaire and they have given response. Okay, so these are all the study has been done in this particular specific uh, study in India in 2016. So what else, what are the problems they have found? Uh, whenever if we have the resistance is increased, so what happened with the uh, major concern? So most of the time, the, the patients with the meconium aspiration syndrome and respiratory distress syndrome, now ARDS and the bronchopulmonary dysplasia. So these are all the main uh, area which they focus on that particular uh, analyzing, analyzing the waveform uh, by observing the flow volume loop. Using the whole flow volume loop and whereas the pressure volume curves, 
which offers a unique opportunity for evaluating the alveolar recruitment and de recruitment okay so these are all the major point is that we are focused in the ventilator management and especially in the acute lung injuries so why i am really sharing all these points so uh, for the uh, this kind of the uh, ventilator graphics so can be used to for the research aspect also we can do a lot of research because we can use as a uh, such evidences and we can use to do that lot of studies over this area where there is a lesser explore sorry sir can you please uh, tilt the camera so uh, you would be completely visible slide okay okay ba ba now okay fine fine now is it okay yeah thank okay, you okay, so uh, it was uh, this is the main objective of this participation so first thing i just want to make it as a uh, the research area so which i just want to do the research in this area so there are a lot of chances uh, to explore in this area okay so with that uh, in, in the essence of this particular uh, session i just want to uh, convey to you all the first scholars and also i just want to uh, show, show the few of the uh, techniques of the how to analyze the waveform and uh, how to uh, how to find out the asynchrony especially with the pressure support ventilations okay and lot of uh, issue with the the ventilator inspiratory rise time and uh, how to find out the uh, termination criteria so how to stop the Uh, how to start weaning the ventilator so all those things can be uh, assisted by the ventilator graphics so these are all the few points i just want to highlight uh, so if the time is very short i just i just skip the few of the things here yeah. so the role of pt in icu uh, we can work on many aspects so many of the uh, students are misunderstanding about the cardio respiratory therapy in icu uh, they whatever they know we yeah, have they only cardio nothing it's just breathing and breathing pastoral drainage techniques only so you can just imagine the even nowadays the positioning in the vent icu for the covid 19 anyone knows what is the right position for the covid 19 patient with the pneumonia can you can you anyone have share this please in the chat chat box now the current scenario is the covid 19 okay the physiotherapists are more keen on positioning the patient at least minimum 10 hours a day they are doing especially this awake position Okay, this position is when the patient is in awake. That time they use the position. Which position it is? Anyone shared in chat box? Yes, thank you, uh, Dr. Shruti Nair. And really, yeah, very good. Uh, resume physiotherapy and uh, Kalpana and Shri was, yeah, good. It's a prone ventilation. Absolutely right. And thanks for your overwhelming response. The prone ventilation. uh it is very 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 peculiar to but lot of lot of recovery so i spoke to the uh, intensivist from chennai an leading hospital and he was seeing a patients every day nearly 30 to 40 patients are there in the covid 19 uh, in, in their regular uh, inflow of the hospital patient itself out of that hardly uh, 75 percentage more than seven, nearly 70 percentage of the patients are uh, critical care so the people who are uh, coming for a visit in the uh, hospital is uh, around uh, Uh, 35 patients are nearly in that specific one hospital itself, and almost they have uh, nearly 22, 22, uh, 25 patients are in the ICU. So they are dealing with the patient, and very effectively they are treating. Okay, so they have, they are told about the lot of techniques we are doing with the positioning and postural drainage and vibration, manual lung inflation techniques, and uh, effective coughing method and tracheal suctioning of breathing incisors and mobilization. and as well as with the application of aerosol technique and humidification and incentive spirometry for fcd bronchodilator and mucoid agent supporting just imagine a physio can do a magic in icu not only with breathing and postural drainage okay that is my specific point of this particular session i just want to ignite the role of physiotherapy is effective and immense and it is highly uh, appreciable in icu okay so i just want to share this one at this moment and just i want to talk about few of things i just uh, skip into the, the major part of my session <clears throat> yeah so before I start here i just uh, i just want to disclaim about this i just i don't want to read it completely so i just give you this an idea it can be under always supervised medical care practitioner It should be always with the, your senior. 
so don't try anything alone okay unless if you have a qualified unless you have been experienced so this kind of the approaches will be may turn into in a wrong way so try to do this all under your supervision of your medical professionals okay i just uh, uh, give a brief idea about the mechanical ventilation as we all know it's a procedure mainly for the respiratory failure it's a procedure for giving a respiratory failure it's indicated for respiratory failure and it's broadly defined one is unable to meet that body's needs of for the oxygen delivery and as well as with the carbon dioxide removal that is a basic idea everyone knows about that and the ventilator which delivers the air which can be usually with the elevated oxygen content and also which can helps to uh, another one important the important uh, the portal entry of the air is endotracheal tube so why i am sharing this point here endotracheal tube obstructions also can be reflected in this kind of the readings of this graphics so that's why we need to know about the the proper positioning and the fixation of this and endotracheal tube everything should be absorbed by the therapist also so the the common thing to treat with the ventilator are the protection hypoxemic respiratory failure and hypercapnic respiratory failure and combined both also okay i just want to share this one for the beginners who are budding physiotherapists and students also in this group so i just uh, please spot on research scholars i'm just giving you a very basic point of it so i just want this is all this is all exclusively for our bachelor students and uh, uh, beginners of the practitioners so we talk about uh, we're going to talk about the airway resistance which can be a refers to as resistive force which is an encounter during the mechanical cycle and normally it will be a 5 cm of h2o is a reference yes, simple it is a elasticity of the lungs and as like a rubber okay as the case of in a sesh and which can expand to form the change in the lung volume under pressure so uh, with a always with a low uh, lung compliance it is very difficult to uh, find out the inhalation uh, the pressure and it always the, the person who is having a, a struggle with the uh, expansibility that can be referred as a stiff lungs okay so this is always they having a poor compliance would be a positive pulmonary fibrosis and the stick requiring okay so these are all the few things which always remember that will be commonly you can see in the obstructive lung diseases the low elastic requiring methods okay and another one important point we can do we can we should know about atelectasis so lung collapse you know so there's a complete or partial part of the lobe of the lung so which can be a, a tiny sacs of the alveoli which can be not able to inflate properly it will become deflated and uh, possibly this can be filled filled with the correction of the fluids which i can see in the edema so and whereas another one important terminology we should remember the de recruitment that is the loss of the gas exchange as i mentioned in the first picture so with the 3000 ml of the gas volume which was not uh, i mean it was not utilized properly in the lung so that was the another important thing that is the de recruitment and uh, the main these are all the de recruitment is one of the most common causes for the the gradual hypoxemia in the intubated patients okay and uh, which can be minimized by increasing the peak okay for your information in covid 19 patients so usually they will do 5 to 6 7 8 and maximum 9 9 10 uh, will be the maximum level so they will be using here with the high peak uh, and but not more than uh, 15 so they will be doing with a 10 to 15 of the uh, uh, peak level should be increased so it means positive and expiratory pressure okay so that they are doing and uh, recruitment here with the the restoration of the gas exchange according to the surface area of the uh, applying pressure to reopen the collapsed uh, or uh, collapsed part of the lung uh, and another one important thing we have to be predict the body weight uh, it is not a uh, body weight of the normal uh, simple body weight which is measured usually in a yes, traditional way so it is a predicted body weight here we have a specialized measurement for the male and female by measuring with the tape in the supine recumbent position so we can just measure to head to head to toe the length of the measurement will be in the inches so accordingly we can plan prepare this uh, predict the body weight with the formula i will share this slide formula also okay and uh, the gas exchange so normally it happens with the um, yeah you can see in this picture a simple picture i can show this and shortly 
how it is a normal cluster of these alveoli with the normal capillary which is delivering carbon dioxide and it is carbon dioxide which is eliminating out and picking up the oxygen again so the red and one red color one it will be again going back to the uh, circulation so and how it is happening every part of the break okay so that for every breath it is happening in this way so we are getting this gas exchange okay so when it is uh, happening with this specific with the uh, alveolus exchange the ventilation occurs by with the proper way to uh, make it make the patient to ready for uh, ventilating properly and uh, it is also uh, there will be chances of uh, delivering or delivering the carbon dioxide okay from the from uh, from the alveoli to it will be uh, exhaled by the patient okay so normal it will be happen every minute of ventilations so that way ventilation will be measured into the minute ventilation that is about 6 to 8 liters per minute so you should remember that particular one and in case of the increased co2 production so that minute ventilation may be increases to 10 to 15 liters per minute okay please remember normally 6 to 8 liters per minute and increased to 10 to 15 liters per minute okay you can see this picture yeah this second the green one is the response with how the uh, carbon dioxide which can be eliminated so these are all the few points to uh, share you as a basic yeah and ventilation and oxygenation so you can you can find out here how much the oxygen delivery will be happen here in the by means of the cardiac output the how much the hemoglobin level in terms of uh, a formula of 1.39 times of the oxygen saturation uh, with the 0 0.003 of the times of the partial pressure of the oxygen so this is a, a small calculation so accordingly they will be finding the oxygen carrying capacity especially with the delivery of the oxygen so can be checked okay so how efficiently it is carrying the oxygen that is a very important so there are the steps which are used in this uh, carrying this and uh, yeah this is the uh, calculation for delivery of the oxygen so this simply the cardiac output so normally we have you know for the four liters of the cardiac output for every normal human being so in terms of multiplying with the hemoglobin level and in terms of times of 1.39 okay along with the oxygen saturation so this is the one method to measure this one oxygen delivery yeah. so what happened with the issues with the uh, oxygenation so we have the hypoxemic status so sometimes you can see this picture i just i simply i, I want to share this picture uh, this kind of the intracardiac sh shunt so what happened in, there will be a split of the for uh, capillary vessels, when the oxygenated uh, blood, which goes, the oxygenated blood which goes to the alveoli and get oxygenated and coming back to the circulation, and the part of the, uh, the the capillaries which is directly without going to the alveoli, it is just shunting out and it will be again going to the circulation. Okay, so that is also causes the hypoxemia. In the second picture, you can see here atelic axis. What happened? That's a lung collapse. Look at this lung alveoli. When it is getting collapsed, so there is a contact with the capillary vessels and to the alveoli. It is not closer. So what happened? Again, the blue color and again the bluish. So what it means? The same uh, CO carbon dioxide blood will go again to the system. Okay. And if in case of edema in the alveoli, in the second picture you can see that. So the edema, if it is present in the alveoli, then also what happened? There is the oxygen which is entering through the uh, anatomical dead space and it's coming to the respiratory zone. So that will not carry to the the capillaries. So here also there is a C, the bluish color. The vessels are bluish. CO2 is again go to the again to the circulation. So that may cause hypoxemia. So if there is any thrombus, if any thrombus in the pulmonary capillaries, okay, so that may cause obstruction. Then also it will not in take in part in the oxygenation. So again it will be going back to the system systemic circulation with the deoxygenated blood. This is the situation happen. So how hard to believe the patient is dying with these situations? These are all the common situations we are facing. Okay. So in that situation, how do we deal with the ventilator supports? So how do we calculate and how do you make it interactive with you? I mean, I mean make it you make it make ventilator yourself as a friend of you, and you can assist the patient also to recover better way. Okay. So that is the ultimate aim of this particular session. Again, I am reminding. Okay, then I just want to yeah hypoxemia and vasoconstriction and like as this these are all the common thing which we are facing with these issues. Yeah. So this is another one thing hypoxic uh, vasoconstriction. So what happened in response to the uh, uh, hypoxemic status? So that that itself there there will be chances of the vasoconstriction which may happens uh, 
by means of this uh, mis 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 matching of the ventilation and percussion uh, ratio of the V by Q matching. So that means with the uh, hypoxic vasoconstriction and which can be given as a, a cluster of this alveoli which is not receiving oxygen here also and therefore the artery wall is getting to the alveoli constrict and divert the blood away from this this is the one situation also can be uh, possible in this case. Okay, I told about the day recruitment and recruitment. Uh, when you, excuse me, sir, am I audible, sir? Am I audible to you all? Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so what happened whenever there is a collapse, atelectasis like is a lung collapse. So de recruitment is, is a large collapse. We can, we can, it can be a different type of collapse. It is not only specific to the alveoli. The entire lung, which is affected by the lung, excessive lung weight due to the fluid, or uh, if the chest wall uh, weight may, or may weight, or maybe it is maybe compressing over the lungs, that may also cause uh, de recruitment or the abdominal contents, the abdominal contents which can distend over there. So that can be a for issues and there will be a pericardial effusion, there is a cardiac compression, that may also cause a de-recruitment. Okay, so, uh, so it can be a major problem when we talk about with the atelectasis and de-recruitment. Okay, so just when we talk about with the, yeah, just coming to the, uh, the main picture of the today's session, uh, Okay, so why do we need to do so? Another one important point to remember. So we need to work on these three area. Okay, one is normal lung that you know everyone. Okay, another one is resistance problem. Another one is the compliance problem. Okay, whether the resistance is an issue or compliance is an issue. So these are all the two formula. I just share this one DPT also. Okay, so you will you will be getting an idea. So with this we can able to find out the compliance and resistance of the lungs. Okay, so how we can able to track with the the graph? using with the uh, loop graph, okay, and as well as the scalar graphs, okay, so here uh, it's a kind of a scalar graph, okay, just we can check with the initiation of this particular, this, look at this one initiation point, okay, I can just show this here, when it is the initiating of the breath, okay, the inspiratory phase is started and it is going up, up, up and they will be stopped and that will be maintaining, okay, when you want to check the the pressure of the uh, the person's response with the inspiration, we can hold the inspiratory hold button in the ventilator. So we can find out the flat view. That is called inspiratory hold a button is there in the every ventilator. So that, that can be used. So this flat view pressure can be measured. So how long they can able to the the for inspiratory hold. Okay. So this kind of pressure can be measured at this level. Okay. And the end of this particular measure, so when it's going to the start to expiration. So this level, which we can see in the peep, okay. According to this level only, the peep settings also can be altered, okay. So when you check about the maximum expiration by the patient, or we can able to check with the inspiration level, and you can hold it and you can check. Then you can use the effective method of your techniques on the patients, okay, for facilitating the breathing or not. If you are going to do with the PNF techniques, also you can check with this uh, uh, some uh, forms the graphical representations. So that you can able to identify the variations whether the patient is improving or not okay so so another one thing when you talk about with the uh, air traffic so here when you talk about the air trapping which may uh, yeah you can see that the peak inspiratory pressure okay and the p plat that's a plateau pressure okay so what happened when you determine this specific part of the patient's uh, response with the high resistance problem with the compliance problem or a common problem, compliance problem, so which can how it can assist the uh, differential diagnosis of the respiratory failure. So that is one point to remember. And another thing, air trapping. So how do you refer the uh, air trapping? So as the uh, kind of a breath checking. That means uh, taking a breath on the breath. Okay, that's called breath checking. Okay, so which can also develop the auto peep in this area. So we can produce an auto peep. Uh, it will give alarm. So in that situation, we can find out with the 
um, auto peep method so that can be measured by pressing the expiratory hold okay you have to press the expiratory hold button then you can able to find the auto peep level okay so this can be very well uh, trained by using some hands on session okay so if you do the hands on session it will be very effectively you can plan for the so we will be given a problem so, and how do you solve the situation so different kind of the uh, alarm beeps are coming so how do you respond okay this kind of things can be at the hands on session we can we can do to learn more in the better way so now i can show this a uh, small graphics which can show that how it is be expiratory after the giving an expiratory pause so you can find this kind of the readings over there okay so when the button is pressed and later will display the total peep and also the auto peep is the difference between the total peep and the set peep how much peep they have reached how much they have set so that difference will give auto peep okay that will be a, a technique to see here okay these are all the few things i just want to tell you uh, just given you uh, this are all the problem then it is getting a higher resistance then the patient will get a low compliance so these are all the conditions which we should remember okay i just skip this where because of the short of time yeah even uh, even ventilator can causes the uh, even even they will be getting a chances to get improved with the heart failure also ventilated patients can improve the cardiac function in case of the right heart failure they improve the cardiac function so that is also another point of this uh, this can be how the atrial uh, response it can be seen in the graph okay by when the chance of atrial stenosis will be starting with the curve with the u curve and from over distension so u curve comes the patient will be increasing their intrathoracic pressure so that the patient is improving so this is the one uh, simple curve i just want to show Uh, when the real time if you picture if you want to see that I, that can be seen the same graphics this is the method of the formula which i have told already with the male and female how to uh, check the preferred body weight okay preferred body weight i mean uh, body weight for the calculation of the tidal volume to set the tidal volume according to this method okay so the the main purpose okay so after seeing this physiological part the main purpose of the ventilator graphics so why we can use yes as you say they allow the users to interpret and evaluate and troubleshoot the ventilator and the patient's response to the ventilator so that is the ultimate aim for this one and we can monitor the patient's disease status okay and we can able to uh, find out with the various uh, uh, changes in their in their uh, capacities and uh, volumes okay uh, whether they are they are able to access with the a response to therapy and uh, to check for the evaluating for the response to therapy and to monitor the ventilator function so all those things can be a, a, a easy way to find using with the graphics and uh, we can able to find you on the ventilator uh, to reduce the work of breathing to optimize the ventilator ventilation and as well as the maximize the patient comfort so this is the main purpose of this monitoring the graphics just now you can tell so you can tell if you are visiting a physiotherapy in icu as a physiotherapist do you agree is it required or not for a physiotherapist the knowledge of these for uh, monitoring of the graphics okay so please you can just put your opinion okay no it is not if you say if you are not not a cup of, cup of my tea no problem okay we can go with that so i'm not sure, i'm not sure about with the uh, role of physiotherapist in uh, all area because people are having a different interest and people willing to go in the sports and in the orthopedic setup and neuro setup okay wherever if you go the critical care part when it comes it not only with the cardio respiratory even for the neuro therapist can come for a critical care icu and for the orthopedic therapist for the basic ratings of this okay so it is not only for a cardio respiratory therapist so it's for everyone to learn about this idea behind this uh, ventilator graphics yeah so the as i mentioned already i just given you a, a brief about the scalars and the loops these are all the mechanical ventilation graphics okay so it can be yeah, used as a flow time the scalars are the flow time pressure time and volume time these all will be covered in the scalars okay so you can see this form the scalars with the, the plot pressure and the volume and the flow against the time okay and time is with the x axis okay the y axis is will be with the the, the volume of the volume of the gas okay that will be in this way axis this x axis will be for the time how much time they are maintaining that will be the x axis okay this kind of the wave form called as a scalar wave 
okay and loops carrier wave and uh, loops loops is a for the pressure volume and flow volume loops okay how much pressure the, the, the person able to breathe how much the flow okay how much flow is uh, different and pressure is different okay when you blow into the balloon the pressure of the air which will inflate the balloon okay so the how much volume of the air against the resistance it is developing that is a pressure and the flow in the sense the flow in the main, how much how much how much how much of the volume of the gas which is entering in the balloon okay so that is a difference between these two things so these loops can be seen in this way okay flow volume loop same like in your spirometry okay the flow volume loop can be seen so these loops are with the blood pressure uh, or the flow against the volume okay and uh, here there is no time component so how much the volume of the air goes positive or negative okay inspire and expire so that can be seen in the loops okay and the basic shapes of the waveforms so you should remember the basic shapes of the waveform so the the ramp waves are considered the same as the exponential shapes of this one and the square and the ramp and as well as with the ramping with the ascending ramp and descending ramp okay and sine waves what the also you can find okay and exponential rising and exponential delay okay and uh, these are all the uh, points can be okay it will take a, a lengthy session to uh, uh, interact how to make it uh, user friendly with a hands on way so we need a uh, more time to interact yeah we are ready to uh, share my knowledge so hopefully in future we will do that with that also and uh, how to make it yeah effective okay and the square wave which can means to mainly help to uh, the constant set of the parameters and especially with the uh pressure control mode and uh, volume control mode okay and the ramp wave which can be represented with the variable parameter which is uh, the depends upon the lung characteristics especially in the uh, acceleration and deceleration and sine waves which is more, mostly in the spontaneous and unsupported breathing sine waves are spontaneous breathing and unsupported breathing but that means when you are started weaning the patient so these waves will be uh, you can see that okay and the pressure wave forms uh, the, in in case of volume modes the shape of pressure wave will be the ramp for mandatory breaths and in the volume modes adding adding a inspiratory pause or the hold will add also small tap to the waveform okay and this will be a thought to improve the uh, distribution of the ventilation so this kind of things if they if it is showing that will be it will be a chance of improving the ventilation okay so like that uh, we can uh, find out the changes in the uh, uh, the waveform we can able to uh, identify the patient's response this is the pressure waveform in pressure modes the shape of the pressure wave will be a square shape what does it mean it means the constant during inspiration or the pressure is set in a parameter whether the patient is breathing as per the parameter or the constant with the inspiration these are all the few points to remember okay okay i just uh, uh, should i take another 5 minutes to complete shall i take a 5 minutes extra yes sir yes sir no issue no issue Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So the mode of the ventilators. Basically, I just want to share with us, and I just want to close the session within a five minutes about the basics because we uh, we got uh, we can we we have a, a good teachers in uh, all the universities and colleges, so they are ready to uh, teach the basics. Yeah, because it is a it is mandatory for the each and every uh, bachelor program uh, to finish this for bachelor degree uh, with the final year cardio with the ventilator basics. I hope. Uh, these are all the things already been taught in your uh, bachelor degree okay so with the variable control variables of the uh, ventilators okay and condition variables out there okay and control variables are the targets that are set what is the target we can okay according to the base of the mode of the ventilation okay which where you choose so accordingly the control variables will be work for example uh, the pressure controlled uh, and volume controlled mode of ventilation okay in the pressure control uh what we are setting for the designated pressure so that is delivered with the every breath okay in the volume control how much the volume the tidal volume uh, instead of that they can use the tidal volume how much should be set okay like that there will be a which is the target okay that will be called a control variable okay and conditional variable conditional variable is the uh, dependent variable 
especially in the mechanical ventilation. For example, what can I say? In the volume control mode of ventilation, okay, that means how much volume of the air, 500 ml of the air should be go pedal volume to the lung and come back. Okay, that was a volume controlled mode of ventilation. Okay, in that what happened? The tidal volume is set as a parameter, but the pressure is conditioned variable. Okay, the pressure is when the pressure is varies, that will be a conditional variable. So, according to vary the pressure, when you are giving, I am giving you 500 ml of the oxygen will be entering the lung and coming back. So, whenever the pressure is reduces, then it can act as a conditional variable. So, that will add the uh, support with the ventilation. Okay, this is the main thing I just want to tell about control variable and condition variable also differentiate. Okay, next one is a trigger. Something has to trigger to work the ventilator effectively. Okay, how to trigger? That means it can initiate the inspiration. Patient is an unconscious. So how do how do we can how do we know to in uh, the ventilator should work? So the patient when when it goes unconscious, when the patient is uh, failure fail to try and uh, try for the breath, then it will be inspired. Okay, that is the first factor to initiate the inspiration. And uh, uh, next one is the breath can be pressure triggered and it's a flow triggered and time triggered. It can be any type of this we can trigger because sometimes the pressure is reduces, it will be triggering. When the flow of the air is reduces, then it will be triggered. Okay, and the time, the time taken for inspiration to expiration ratio, one is to two ratio if you said, so if it is not there, then it will be triggering for two expiration and one inspiration. So like that, the triggering is the other important basic point of the ventilator. And cycle, that's a very important point. The cycle, which is a determination point for the end of inspiration, then beginning of exhalation. So for example, you can say the, the volume and pressure or time cycle. So this can be a, a, a kind of a reciprocal point of the, the basic function of this ventilator. So normally the lung is doing all this work. When I am talking, when we are listening, all these things are happening. Suddenly if anyone have a yawning, that means what? You are going to strive for the oxygen. Maybe in your room the oxygen level is less. It doesn't mean you are going to sleep. Okay, that is the first point. Just hold your breath and you can make your, uh, you can stimulate you can immediately you can vanish your yawning feel. You can control the breath. That is a beautiful technique. Is there a lot of techniques are there for the day-to-day -day life activities. So similarly, the ventilator also a a great boon for our uh, ICU management and not only for the intensivist, not only for the respiratory therapist, also for a few therapist. Okay, so it will be a very handy, uh, yeah, friendly, friendly part of your uh, rehabilitation. So if you if you love it, definitely it will help you and it will make you more interesting over there. Uh, I just skip a uh, few of the points and different phases of the breathing. I just initiation means respiratory phase, and active phase, exhalation. Okay, I just uh, yeah, settings also we have the uh, PAP, peak pressure, peak pressure, plateau pressure we can set. Okay, and the PEEP, PEEP only we just want to tell you about that. In COVID-19 patients, they use us with the 10 to 15 PEEP, normally they are set, in the, especially in the pneumonia case, and they are doing with the prone ventilation, and they have very, very drastically the PEEP has been reduced and started weaning the patient in the, uh, especially COVID-19 pneumonia, okay, not all the cases, not in ARDS, so COVID-19 pneumonia cases, they have tried, okay, uh, where there is no uh, edema, and they have tried in the awake prone ventilation, prone ventilation. Okay, patient is in awake, they have done. Okay, so these are all the few things and uh, your settings in the IP, intrinsic PEEP. So the, the actual uh, total PEEP which said and what the PEEP they have patient is uh, achieved. So that auto PEEP difference also, auto PEEP. And how much the, the pressure should be given, driving pressure. Okay, delta P can be mentioned and there will be a chance of the preventing the lung injury. So usually the plateau pressure will be maintained to less than 30 centimeter H2. So like that, the PP or PEEP also can be used with the 5 cm H2O or maximum or more. So that will be standard parameters for the ventilator. Okay, and the time and duration for that. So an inspiration time, expression time, and ratio of the inspiration and expression also. And the peak inspiratory flow and tidal volume should be set properly. These are all the findings you can see in the, uh, the different uh, monitoring system of the Ventilator, you can see in this uh, uh, the readings. Okay. And these are all the, yeah, and more of FIO2. FIO2 is very important. Whenever you do the partial drainage technique, the FIO2 is important to check. You have to increase the FIO2, fractional inspired oxygen. Usually, normal breathing, you want enough for that. 20% of oxygen in this room is enough to breathe. 
Okay, that's a normal situation. So when the patient is in a difficult situation, the required they have to increase the 60 percent, 70 percent. They will be FAO2 will be increased, improved. Okay. So but when you're doing with the postural drainage techniques, okay, prior to that we have to check the graphs. When the graphs showing the sawtooth appearance, sawtooth appearance if it is there, there will be a chances of these lung secretions. So no sir, I can do with the auscultating with my patient and I will find. Yeah, it can be done, but sometime what happened? The ventilator tube itself may be dripping with water due to the humidifier. Okay, that watery sound which can misinterpret it with the crackles. Okay, so that in the situation we need to check the, the scalar and loop graphs of the ventilator. Okay, so that is the ultimate point. That if you do manual techniques and if you want to check with this ventilator to find out with the lung secretions. The sawtooth appearance can be under one for a physiotherapist. It's a just a basic idea, very brief idea. So under FIO2, we can adjust before and after your postural drainage technique. So all these things will be important. And moreover, maintenance pneumonia. So this tool is very important to prevent pneumonia. Okay, that is a different area that we will be discuss in the future session. And the modes of ventilation, as I mentioned already, assist controls and SIMV and the pressure control, okay, and pressure support, all those non-invasive ventilation and continuous ventilation. And now they are doing non-invasive ventilations. Also, they have trying with the COVID-19 patients due to the shortage of this one, causing the high chances of the aerosol procedures. So some in any lesser impact with the COVID-19 patients with the NI positive ventilation, NIV, NIPV also they can use. So, and apart from that, continuous CPAP and the BiPAP can be used, okay. Uh, and also unconventional modes of ventilation is also available. Uh, high, uh, high frequency oscillatory ventilation, so that will be a, another one method which can be tried in Italy uh, during the time of the, the pandemic. So they use this one with the uh, high frequency oscillatory ventilation. So that is also working in a very good effect in this specific cases. Okay. So this is the important thing. Every day we have to assess the complete set of these parameters. It is mandatory to check with the pulmonary system, and it is mandatory for to check the mode of settings of this. This is all the uh, outline map of this mode of settings, okay? And uh, how to check with the, all the trigger sensitivity, and also with the the main key point to uh, take take away is of the session is how to interpret the common use calories, uh, pressure and flow and volume as I mentioned already, and uh, how the different modes of ventilation uh, okay determine the waveform, and how to classify the common forms of the patients with the asynchrony and desynchrony, and it may be due to the over resistance and under resistance okay and breast checking how to find the breast checking so these are all the few points always we have to be uh, aware of this. So still, I, I I know still some of the students may not understand in deeper. So it requires some time to uh, practice and practice. Then only we will get into interact with this one. So these are all the, the scalar uh, waveform, example scalar waveform. Okay, using the different uh, control of the uh, system, control, different method of mode of uh, ventilation, we can find this, find these uh, changes. And we which having with the different loops and uh, cycling, delayed cycling method. Okay, and uh, reverse triggering the method is used in the COVID-19 patients. So these are all the few techniques how to make, increase the tidal volume to maximum of 80, 8 ml uh, of the kg of body weight, and the plateau pressure should be maintained 27 centimeter of H2O, especially in the typical ARDS patients they have tried. Okay, and it's a, it's a standard format they have given for the COVID-19 patients. Yeah, now I'm coming to the point again for the research by area. All the research for please be alert. This is a situation they have given, they have sent a state-wise responses. Look at here, okay? So the different state they have given the response. How, after giving the questionnaire, what the response from the 250 hospitals, only 105, uh, yeah, these are the questions have been answered by the therapist, okay? Almost 23 questions have been sent and uh, so how many questions are answered, okay? So these are all the things will be uh, as per this graphics. So and finally, they have found about this, uh, used, you know, how to use this scalar and loop, loop graph or identify the problem, okay? As I mentioned, it's a resistance or a compliance issue that can be done. And the flow time, scalar and flow volume loops are used to identify the pressure of the air trapping, okay? And it helps the uh, bronchodilators, helps by reversing the bronchoconstriction, okay? So, and uh, helping the, reducing the airway resistance, 
okay and uh, helping to find out the dynamic uh, hyperinflation okay and deep analysis to reduce the dynamic inflation okay on the both the flow volume and pressure volume loop is under the introductory leakage also can be another one measure and uh, the amount of leak can be also so measured with the inspirated expiratory tidal volume so all these things can be a, a major outcome by learning about this graphics so by concluding this session i just want to uh, know very sad thing the knowledge among the is about this particular as per this study i am telling about that not this general one uh, i hope i will be sharing you few of the questionnaires so try to uh, put your uh, feedback on that question here okay and uh, it's about that. only the using of delta graphics uh, this is out of the uh, 15 uh, so these are uh, out of 15 the space and uh, this fine kind of uh, the therapy is to learn more about a uh, specific point of view to help you over continuous um, uh, therapy education kind of a program and of our kind of a workshop uh, in more detail in this area okay i hope uh, it will be an enlightening session for you all to learn something a uh, new from today's session i thank you one and all and uh, i just uh, show these all the references which i have used in this study welcome you all for the upcoming webinars on description for oncology and endocrine dysfunctions and sports cardiology also so another one important area just working on the sports cardiology how to prevent sudden death okay physios can plan we can uh, we can improve the endurance of these athletes so we can Uh, fight against the sudden death in a specific kind kind of the sports events and games thank you if you have any questions you can put in the chat box i will try to help. thank you thank you sir thanks a lot uh, for your such a great session and for elaborating on the much needed topic yes. the ventilator yes sir And thank you for the patience and the, I think yeah it's a doctor ritu uh, has given a question uh, that can there be a de recruitment due to the cardiac tamponade yeah it is possible any kind of the cardiac compression de recruitment can be possible i have given an example of pericardial uh, effusion so cardiac tamponade also can be a possible thing and any more questions previously any any more question i think everyone know about the prone ventilation really i appreciate because of the covid actually that the technique was done in 1974 and a study with the 1974 itself uh, but in the covid 19 the prone ventilation uh, is effectively used in kerala Uh, and they have given a very good result now in chennai also they have they are doing the same uh, prone ventilation for many of the uh, patients with covid critical care patients so uh, uh, i will be sharing with uh, on a google form uh, so that can be a yeah, it can be motivating you for learning more about the ventilator uh, we can do in a uh, more on hands on technique hands on means uh, like a uh, they will be giving a problem and solution and uh, how to reveal that like a case studies so that will be real time feel you will get uh, there are few softwares we are going to we are using uh, to animation softwares so that can give the different changes of the waveform then uh, you can uh, you can compile which problem it is and how, what is the possible solution so like that the case study based uh, uh, based on assessment daily assessment how to perform and which are the points which are missing in the assessment so like that kind of the hands on training will be there okay don't blame uh, how will you do everything with the hands on in the webinars <laughs> so so we are we are thinking in a different way of, of uh, uh, delivering kind of this kind of the hands on session so thank you for your um, 
presents uh, for different uh, universities, students from different universities. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for a, such a great elaboration. <coughs> yeah, okay. there are a few uh, there questions. Is, one on. more question is there. Uh, code is based on the patient's response only. When, you, when the patient is completely unconscious, they will be starting with continuous mode only. Okay, it depends upon the patient. That's why I'm telling when the patient is not completely hypoxemic uh, or hypercapnic. Okay, so in that situation, they use the NIV. NIV also they have used. They use the NIV very effectively, though it is expensive in management. But they have done with very non-invasive ventilation. They have done. Mode is based on the continuous ventilation, then uh, synchronous intermittent mandatory ventilation, and then really spontaneous mode. Like that, we can slowly. It is a kind of uh, uh, once the lung is getting recovered, then we can alter the mode of ventilation. So it is. If you specify a case study, I can say, I can say which ventilation can be used. The question is which you have asked is a, a general question, so I just giving this. I think I may satisfy your answer. And uh, any infection control guideline for a highly infectious disease like uh, on any monitor and uh, transformator. Uh, for the country like uh, Western countries, they use the negative pressure environment. You just imagine when you study your BPT in the history of the ventilator in the 1945 in a uh, Second World War season time. They use the chamber ventilation. You might see in the picture in your cash cardio book, or you might see in that anywhere. That is negative pressure ventilation. Patient will be kept inside the uh, chamber and they have given a ventilator. That time they have used a negative pressure ventilator. Now we have we are having the positive pressure ventilator. So, uh, but what are they are doing? <laughs> they are using the environment completely, for sure it is, COVID cases, we must use with the complete uh, scrub and the mask and completely with the PPE, complete kit PPE. It's cool. Even though it is quite expensive uh, per day for a patient, for a single patient, they are spending about 30,000 for the PPE kit. Okay, so just imagine, it's a difficult procedure. And uh, so that, that's why they are uh, reducing the uh, visit of physiotherapists also in the ICU because of this. Only six hours only it is valid to use. Six to eight hours maximum. So that is the point in this issue. And uh, another one thing, previous presentation, uh, one more guideline can, can be used. When they are doing the intubation, when suctioning time, they cover with the glass chamber. They cover with the glass chamber. With the glass chamber, there will be, the hole will be there two, for two hands. And through that, they can use to put into the intubation and extubation. So actually, in the Ames Hospital, one doctor has uh, suddenly, after removing the PPE, he can't do the, suddenly they want to intubate the patient. They remove the PPE and they have tried uh, with the manually. And uh, he was advised to, to go for the 14 days of the quarantine, the intensivist in uh, Ames Hospital. Uh, so it was, in the, it was, I mean, it was, uh, I mean uh, published in the uh, magazine. Been expressed, they have given this one. Yeah, can we have a dual control modes like pressure control and volume control and evident, uh, in order, event of the graphics? Uh, I'm not sure about this uh, because that will be a, a role of the uh, intensivist and anesthetist they can use on respiratory therapist, the setting of this particular area with a dual mode. Uh, in my physio point of it, uh, I could not uh, suggest anything on this particular question. I'm sorry to say. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Harsh, sir. I, always you are supporting like a senior. I'm really happy, delighted to uh, see here many senior uh, faculties here. And uh, uh, so maybe they trust on me to uh, share a few. I'm ready to learn from you all, also my seniors. And senior most uh, faculties over here. Uh, uh, even uh, I'm happy to uh, be with you all, always. In, in case of any kind of the struggle uh, on any part of it, uh, I'm ready to help you uh, always. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. We are, we are, we are ready to, ready to uh, in, in, in future, uh, we are planning to have the another one, uh, a group of uh, physiotherapists. They can, uh, we can, especially in the ICU management, we can have the interaction forum also through online, same webinar forum, you will be interacting. 
so uh, that will be a plan because now uh, covid covid 19 patient only we have even we cannot take uh, any single uh, photographs uh, even this photograph i have taken i have i couldn't take from my chennai intensivist uh, he tried to take the picture of this one uh, but uh, very hard to take this one <laughs> because of the mobile phone also not allowed inside the icu uh, they covered with the they put the camera with some small hole and they have taken the picture thank you sir yeah, i will i will plan to have a practical demonstration means here practical demonstration means the animation will be will be there the animation will be there with the case study okay we have to solve the uh, case study so that kind of practical demonstrations can be possible because live patients uh, we cannot show now we cannot how how can possible so the situation of the patients we can name. the live situation only when we go into practice inside the icu only we can be a master on so whatever uh, uh, we can do that and only when we when we interact with the patient and when we when with the team of the people and we have to analyze in multiple ways and moreover i found always uh, icu ventilation I can't get the glass. Always boring. <laughs> iPhone. I'm to. I'm really because the reason is we don't know anything. The patient is breathing. Everything. It is a lung. It's a. It's a anatomical dead space. In. It's a complete uh, volume of the air which is entering. It is mix mix of the dead space and as well as with the oxygenating space. So we cannot just imagine the the graph only. You know that is the reason for uh, boring this session. <laughs> I know. the difficulty of uh, thing but when you save a patient na uh, this will go off i that trust i really trust if you are the one person responsible to save up say one more uh, life that's a great thing in ever uh, i hope you will get a very good uh, uh, responsibility and a, very, very, a lot of uh, chances to uh, explore your uh, future okay and you can prove yourself uh, uh, save uh, savior of the lives that is the ultimate essence of my session uh, i hope uh, i think it's already late for many people i think they are still uh, waiting for the dinner also <laughs> uh, thank you himanshu once again uh, thank you thank you rajdeep sir uh, and few more seniors i, I don't remember the names uh, sorry uh, thank you sir thanks thank you. a lot for a such a great uh, elaboration on the topic and even it is the much needed topic harsar uh, harsar uh, would you like to say something so harsar okay so it is a indeed pleasure for us and we are honored to have you with us here again on the board and we are really grateful to that you always find the time for us to share the knowledge among the people who joins us and we are uh, really grateful to all the senior faculty members who are joining us so i would like to request you you are uh, would you like to share any google form or something uh, as you were speaking about yeah i will share you dr himanshu not now i will later i will share you okay 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 fine fine so on Regarding that uh, session uh, okay. on that day, uh, if anybody has any query they can fill it out fill out the details and then uh, we can plan uh, I, have a, i will keep the column for the doubts or whichever is uh, you want to know okay, in okay. that the reply i will send it to the mail in, okay i will reply in the mail okay okay sir and uh, even uh, just me dr uh, dr ritu rajdeep is trying to say something sir uh, her sir please dr himanshu yes sir dr ritu ma'am mm. yes sir sir her sir Sir, please unmute yourself. Yeah, her sir is uh, muted. I think. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I think his network. Maybe some network issue, uh, sir. Uh, you can speak up. Hello. i think there is some network issue on the herser and so hello sir 